how could you live a more intentional life? There are certainly many different strategies that can be used to help us shift more from conventional to intentional, but sometimes these things might seem a little bit more difficult. However, when we break them down, a lot of these different strategies start with habits. Habits that we can incorporate on a daily basis or a more regular basis to help us live a more intentional life, to feel better, to deal with less overwhelm, and hopefully align your lifestyle to what's most important to you. So in today's video, I want to share 12 of these habits that can lead to a more mindful and intentional life. Hello, you guys, and welcome to Abundantly Minimal. My name is Sarah, and thank you so much for joining me today for this video. I thought since I want this video to be very calming and relaxing, I would film in our bedroom, which is like the blue room, and blue is a very calming color. And I'm going to be going into these 12 different habits today. One key disclaimer I want to share at the beginning is that balance is really important here and we're shooting for balance rather than perfection. Sure, it might sound very exciting to start implementing these habits all at once, but if we try to do things too much too fast, these habits aren't going to stick. So what I would recommend is maybe pick one or two of these habits to start with and slowly incorporate it into your life and then over time you can continue to add more habits. I'd much rather you start out with a few small habits and have some victories rather than try to do too much and give up on it. The first habit is to eat more mindfully and you can do this by chewing your food more thoroughly and just eating slower. It's very easy to be multitasking while we're eating, whether it's with work or entertainment or just trying to rush through a meal to move on to another task. If we can try to slow down the process of our meal time and really savor each bite, actually chew our food, not only will it help digestion, but you'll be a lot more in the present moment, really able to indulge in whatever it is that you're eating. It also allows us more time to just kind of relax and not feel like we have to rush on to the next task. And there can be a lot of healthful benefits that come from doing this. The second habit is to reduce excess noise and embrace silence. It's very easy to be constantly connected to different sounds, whether you're listening to music or a podcast, or there's just a lot of conversation happening. But if we can allow ourselves a little more time of just silence or just embracing the natural sounds in our space or in our world, rather than having that consistent flow of entertainment, gives our brain a chance to relax. Sure, listening to music or podcasts can definitely be enjoyable, but sometimes, even if it's just for small increments of time, giving yourself a moment to just be away from that and really, again, immerse ourselves in that present moment and be able to just kind of relax without having all of the extra sound, extra noise in your life could be helpful. The process of single tasking or working on one thing at a time is also a really important habit to live more intentionally. In the hustle and bustle of daily life, we might feel like we have to rush between different tasks, but sometimes that actually leads us to feel more overwhelmed and actually get less done. I know a struggle of mine has been, my mind feels like it's racing and I'm jumping between five different things, but what if I actually don't get all of them done? That actually has happened more often than I'd like to admit, where you're not able to actually complete anything because you're going back and forth between different tasks. Trying to have laser focus and try to accomplish one task at a time is going to allow us to be a lot more successful and just to slow things down and work a little bit more intentionally. A fourth habit to live more intentionally is to really focus on the five senses. This is an example where sometimes we focus on the destination rather than the journey. Really enjoy and savor the moments. Think about what you see and all the beautiful things that you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you feel. When we can really embrace these different senses, it allows us to live much more in the present moment and focus on more of the simple things that actually can add a lot of joy and value. A really simple example is to think about if you're going for a walk. You might notice the beautiful views or the flowers or plants. You might hear the wind blowing and like, you know, wind chime somewhere or wind rustling through the trees. You might smell the fresh air. You might feel a fresh breeze or the sun. Thinking about our senses keeps us in that present moment no matter what we're doing. And this can be a really healthy habit to do on a more regular basis. My next habit is to move your body. This doesn't have to be an intense exercise regimen. 
Rather, you can focus on getting in physical activity that feels good. It could be simple, going for a walk, stretching, dancing around a little bit. Now, obviously, physical activity has a huge range of benefits, such as reducing our stress levels or giving us more energy. And even if it's something as simple as getting up out of your seat at work and walking around a bit, that can make a difference. Trying to incorporate little pockets of movement throughout the day are going to lead to long-term benefits in the future. Another great habit to live a more intentional life is to practice meditation. And I'm sure I'm not the first person telling you that. There's definitely been a large increase in um, people who've talked about how meditation has been really beneficial to them in their life. One thing that can make meditation a little bit difficult though is it's often tricky about how to get started. There's definitely many ways that people can meditate and there's a lot of different resources out there. There's lots of different guided meditations that you can listen to or even watch on YouTube or read about. And it's tough to know kind of what to get started with. Now, personally, I have found it to be very helpful for me, but I did need a little bit of guidance to get started. So I actually went more of a meditation journal route with um, the Meditation Sidekick Journal from Habit Nest. What I've really liked about it focusing on the habit theme is that it really helps you build in the habit of meditation and the journal itself is actually divided into three parts. I'm currently in the second part. The first week is really giving you a lot of the nuts and bolts about how you can set up a meditation practice. Each day it gives you some helpful information or a guided meditation that you can read through as well as then a few sort of prompts that you're responding to based upon when you're meditating that day and how long you end up meditating. Also, what is your internal dialogue during this meditation and other thoughts that come to mind during that time. It also helps you reflect about how you're feeling and how uh, the meditation is helping you. Overall, I found it to be helpful. Like I said, I'm in phase two. The first seven days is really kind of a general overview and getting you started in the habit. The Second phase, days eight through 21, is about being consistent in your meditation. And the third phase of the journal is rewiring your brain. And I know sometimes journals can be really well intended. I don't know if you've ever started a journal but then not actually finished it. I have done that in the past. This one I am finding it's not too much for me to have to write in, that it's pretty easy to keep up for it. Obviously, you know, besides the actual meditation part that you're doing, it's been fairly simple to use. So I found this to be a helpful tool. Again, um, this is through Habit Nest. The next strategy to live a more intentional life has to do with practicing self-care. Self-care obviously can take many forms. On one hand, you've got more of the necessities such as sleeping more, eating better, practicing good hygiene. On the other side, there's also additional treats that sometimes people think about with self-care, treating themselves to some sort of food item or doing sort of like a spa day. And there's really a wide spectrum. Some self-care strategies are really quick and free and simple. Others are a little bit more involved. And I don't think there's any right or wrong ways with how you choose to practice self-care. But what is important for you to do is really reflect about what you need. What do you need to feel better? It's going to vary. For me, sometimes it's as simple as reaching out to a friend or family member that I haven't talked to uh, recently, and that can be very enjoyable. It could be something like making my favorite dinner um, at home or actually just giving myself the time to do something fun that I wanted to do. It really just depends on you and your needs. If we are practicing self-care, it's going to keep us in a much better headspace and mindset to be able to accomplish other tasks in our lives. If we're not nurturing ourselves, then we don't have as much to give to others. So whatever it is that you need to do for yourself to be able to practice self-care is important. And of course, there are phases of life where you might not feel like you have as much time or resources to give to yourself to do that. But when you can find the time, even if it's little pockets of time here and there, that really does matter and that adds up. The next strategy, and probably one of the most important, is to practice gratitude. Having an attitude of gratitude actually shifts our mindsets a lot to view things more positively. No matter what challenges are going on in our lives, when we view things from a perspective of gratitude, it gives us a much more positive outlook. Because even if X, Y, and Z is not going well, we can still appreciate what is going well and what matters to us. 
So even if we get frustrated about something or angry about something, we know, wow, I'm still so lucky to you know, be alive or to be in this relationship or to be living here or having the opportunity to do this. There's many ways you can practice gratitude. I personally don't write it down. I just kind of reflect about it on a regular basis. It's kind of how I've shifted my brain to just see the world. But if you are new to practicing gratitude, it may be helpful to jot down maybe three things you're grateful for each day, no matter what, and eventually that habit will become part of your daily life and just the way you view the world. Habit number nine is to improve your communication and specifically ways we can have more intentional communication. I think number one is to listen more. And number two is to not get as defensive if we feel like the conversation is maybe questioning um, some of our ideas or ways of life. It's very easy, especially in you know online culture and some of the filter bubbles we end up in where we're consuming a lot of content that's very aligned to what we enjoy, which is very easy to do, I think. I know I do that, maybe you can relate as well, but it's very important for us to make sure we're really listening to others when they're talking to us or communicating with us, even if we don't necessarily see eye to eye. Sometimes we're focused on our response and we don't actually really listen closely to what someone else is saying. If someone's calling our beliefs into question, it can also make us feel really fired up and want to be very defensive, but a defensive conversation where we're not listening to each other is not really going to yield positive results typically. Strategy number 10 is to schedule time for yourself. Similar to self-care, oftentimes in the hustle and bustle of life, we miss out on moments that we can really take the time that we need for ourselves. Now this doesn't have to be like introverted time where you're just on your own. It could still be with others, but make sure that you're allowing yourself choices about how you choose to spend your time and really incorporating positive options that will make you feel good and recharge you and contribute to positive well-being. Even if these are small blocks of time, having time for yourself is so vital, especially when you're so busy helping other people all day. We wanna make sure we remember to take care of ourselves too. Whatever activities you enjoy, build those in just like you would schedule appointments or meetings or other work-related tasks. Schedule that time for yourself to put it on the calendar and don't put it off. Habit number 11 is to be creative. Sometimes I hear people talk about that they don't feel like they're very creative, but it might just be that they haven't had a chance to really explore their creativity. I find the best way to do this is try to be spontaneous, try something new, and let your mind wander a bit. Don't feel like you have to be super productive all the time. It's often times when we let our mind wander and think more freely that we're able to come up with really cool ideas that will benefit ourselves or others. And this can all give us new opportunities. It's fine to be scheduled a lot of the time, but really try to give yourself those moments to embrace your creativity and see what happens. The last strategy and probably the most important is to be kind to yourself. One thing that always frustrates me is when I hear others put themselves down. It could be other family members or friends. I heard it a lot with my students and it really bothers me because what I hope is that people are aware of their natural gifts and realize that they are a really important and special person. If someone's consistently putting themselves down and talking down to themselves, that can be really crippling to self-esteem and self-worth. I've heard others talk about before that, you know, would you talk to another person the way you talk about yourself? Oftentimes, if we are saying hurtful things about ourselves, we wouldn't also say those same hurtful things to other people that we cared about. Let's really shift our self-talk to be more positive and understanding. Sure, maybe we made mistakes, but the thing is, mistakes are part of the learning process. It's part of how we grow, and we need to embrace our failures or our mistakes to be able to move forward. If we're so hard on ourselves, we'll probably be less likely to actually take those chances and give new things a try because we maybe are focused on our failures from before. So try to be kind to yourself as we are you know, doing the best we can as we proceed through life. I hope this video was helpful with giving you some habits to live more intentionally. I do have some related videos I'll link here that you also might like if you enjoyed this one. And of course, if you haven't already, you can subscribe to the channel right here. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.